Welcome to the February 3rd, 2024 episode of the IRL Media News Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Thompson, and today we're discussing Elon Musk goes for a walk with Tesla's Optimus Bot. Starbucks introduces their extra virgin olive oil infused Olato drink. Universal Music Group pulls their music from TikTok. Formula One's Lewis Hamilton is leaving Mercedes for Ferrari in 2025. And EDM DJ Marshmallow sold his $15 million mansion. All that and more on today's episode of the IRL Media News Podcast. Let's get into it. First up is a story about Starbucks. I'm a big fan of Starbucks, but their new extra virgin olive oil infused drink has me questioning what the baristas are even thinking. Starbucks' new drink is called the Olato, and it comes in two different flavors. According to their menu, you can get our Olato with an oat milk latte infused with extra virgin olive oil and a new toffee nut ice shaken espresso with golden foam which is a vanilla sweet cream infused with extra virgin olive oil in a cold foam. Starbucks just launched this new Olato extra virgin olive oil infused drink across all of their U.S. and Canada locations. The drink first debuted in Italy in 2023, with Starbucks execs claiming that the new drink would be its biggest launch we've had in decades. So where did this idea for extra virgin olive oil infused drink come from? The answer is another other than former CEO Howard Schultz, who fell in love with the idea of adding a tablespoon of olive oil each day after meeting with olive oil producer Tomasio Aasso, who introduced him to the practice. Howard Schultz immediately asked his Starbucks beverage team if they could come up with a drink that included extra virgin olive oil. The rest is history, as they say. So how are Starbucks customers receiving this new drink? Not well. His sub-bar reviews are customers and critics are to be believed. Reviews have ranged from instant regret that they tried their new drink to others that feel like the drink is more of a marketing stunt. On the extreme end of reviews, some include customers who have said the drink made them have to run to the bathroom. There is some science that supports drinking a tablespoon of olive oil each day. There's research that links drinking olive oil to lowering the risk of cardiovascular disease as well as lowering blood pressure. Dietitians have long touted the Mediterranean diet that replaces unhealthy fats like butter with olive oil. So maybe Starbucks is onto something with their olive oil infused drinks, but word of caution, only try the new Olato when you're close to a well-ventilated bathroom. Next up, we have a tech story about Tesla's Optimus bots. What happens when one of the world's richest billionaires goes for a walk with one of his Tesla Optimus bots? It turns out the internet has a field day with jokes. On Tuesday, January 30th, 2024, Elon Musk posted a video to his 170.9 million followers on X of his Tesla Optimus bot going for a walk. The video shows the Tesla Optimus bot walking at a leisurely pace. Nothing to see here. Just the first steps of the AI robots taking over the world. Just a few weeks ago, another video was released showing a Tesla Optimus bot folding laundry. Not very well, I might add, but give it time and I'll happily give up doing laundry if a robot wants to take this over from me. And that's the point after all. Elon Musk is on record as saying he sees a future where robots are, quote, capable of performing tasks that are unsafe, repetitive, or boring. And social media sites like X joined in on the fun with some users posting funny robot memes from the Terminator movies, while others took the low road and made Joe Biden jokes, which, from a comedic standpoint, were actually pretty funny, regardless of what you might think about politics. Eva Moss has said, quote, I think Optimus is going to be incredible in five or ten years, and that he estimates that the Tesla Optimus bot will someday have a price tag of $20,000 per robot. While we've all learned to take Elon Musk's timelines and price predictions with a grain of salt, I really do hope he's right. Next up, we have an entertainment story about TikTok. What happens when you remove all the music labels music from TikTok? Turns out, when you strip out all the popular music from artists like Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Bon Jovi, Billie Eilish, Tears for Fears, and Lena Del Rey, it's just a bunch of people dancing to silence. This all happened when the Universal Music Group and TikTok's discussions regarding licensing their music collection collapsed forcing UMG to remove their music, resulting in millions of videos on TikTok being muted. As you can imagine, some TikTok content creators are melting down and don't know what to do with themselves. In some cases, we're talking about their only source of income disappearing overnight. Word of caution, maybe don't build your business on content you don't own and control. The same thing happens when people sell 100% of their products on Etsy, and then their account gets banned. Diversify, people. No word yet on how long well UMG will pull their music from TikTok, but negotiations are ongoing. The heart of the issue comes down to the licensing of music by TikTok from Universal Music Group. As you can imagine, both sides see things differently. UMG put out a statement saying, quote, ultimately, TikTok is trying to build a music-based business without paying the fair value for the music. Then TikTok put out a statement saying, quote, it is sad and disappointing that the Universal Music Group has put their own greed above the interests of their artists and songwriters. Who's right and who's wrong? It's tough to come down and say either side is categorically right or wrong, in my opinion. On one side, 
artists should 100% be compensated for their music, which is essentially art that they've created. On the other hand, I can see TikTok's perspective that they want to reach a fair financial deal to license music. In the end, it's not only the content creators on TikTok, as well as the consumers of the content that are getting hurt, while two big corporations negotiate over royalties. See? I told you the issue wasn't so cut and dry. Next up, we have a story from the sports world of Formula One. The world of Formula One was shaken up on Thursday, February 1st, 2024, when Lewis Hamilton said he'd be leaving Mercedes and joining Ferrari for the 2025 season. I can safely say that no one saw this coming, and I mean no one, including Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff. That's because Lewis Hamilton had just signed a two-year contract extension with Team Mercedes in August of 2023, but he negotiated a clause that would allow him to leave the team after only one season. Did Lewis Hamilton know something the rest of the Formula 1 didn't know at that time? Tough to say, but I'm guessing he saw the writing on the wall of Mercedes and wanted to be safe, including the exit clause, in case a certain prancing horse wearing a Ferrari racing red made him an offer he couldn't refuse. No deal terms of Lewis Hamilton's contract with Ferrari had leaked out at the time of this writing, but give it time. Formula One is nothing if not a very exclusive group of billionaire owners and social media influencer drivers and fans who love to gossip. And for our last story of this episode, we bring you a real estate story about EDM DJ Marshmallow. One of the most famous and mysterious EDM DJs, Marshmallow, is selling his mansion for $15 million after only owning it for less than four years for a nice profit of $4.2 million. The home is located in the Mulholland Estates section of Beverly Hills, California, home to such celebrities as Christina Aguilera, Paris Hilton, Kendall Jenner, DJ Khalid, and in an unusual turn of events, we actually know a lot more than usual about the buyers, who dropped an all-cash offer on the house according to tax records. The new owners are married co-founders of the cloud solution provider SADA Systems, which was just acquired for approximately $800 million. So good for that. Marshmallow originally bought the home during the summer of 2020 for $10.8 million. The home was built in 1992 and is 7,818 square feet has five bedrooms, seven baths, and sits on 0.68 acres. But it doesn't have a gated fence around the house because it's situated within a 24-7 guarded community with security that patrols the neighborhoods and has a ton of security cameras watching over everything. Before you start feeling bad for Marshmallow now that he's homeless, you should know that he still owns three other multi-million dollar homes around Los Angeles. So he'll be all right. That's it for our show today. We really appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you don't want to miss an episode, please consider subscribing and following us wherever you get your podcast from so we can continue to bring you the business behind the news. I'm your host, Chris Thompson, and this has been an IRL Media News Podcast.